factor based on the level of violence and your criminal record. And uh, sir, I'm going to order that you have no contact with Robert Harrison. Let me see here. That is Robert Lester Harrison Jr. No contact with him directly and directly. Stay 500 feet from him at all times. That's yes, where sir. he lives, works, goes to school, anywhere in between. You're not allowed to possess guns or <coughs> ammunition while you're on release. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. So, okay, what about Rudolfo Francisco? He's president of the main. We have an argument. Okay, sir, violating an injunction, and what is your argument, sir? Judge, according to the probable cause affidavit in this case, um, Mr. Francisco is accused of writing letters, love letters, to the uh, a protected party, um, hoping that she would uh, consider taking him back after he's released from prison. Um, in order to prove aggravated stalking, which is what the state is trying to pursue here, um, the state would have to prove that he harassed uh, the protected party. Not just that, that there was an injunction, but that he harassed the party. And according to the definition, um, harassment under Florida Statute Section 784.0481A, harass um, means to engage in a course of conduct directed at a specific person, which causes substantial emotional distress to that person and serves no legitimate purpose. Now, there's nothing in this probable cause affidavit to indicate that there was substantial emotional distress and there's nothing in this probable cause affidavit to indicate that there was no legitimate purpose. In fact, it says in the PC that he was trying to get her to take him back. That is a legitimate purpose for contacting someone, to ask them to forgive them and to um, um, to change their position on, on an issue is an actual legitimate purpose. And I would argue that the state cannot prove. Yes, no. So it's your position that if there's an injunction in place in which a defendant is not allowed to have any contact with a certain individual, love letters are an exception? No, Judge, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying the state could possibly prove violation of an injunction. I'm saying the state cannot prove that, that, he, that there's aggravated stalking after an injunction. Yes, there's a can. difference. Right. There is a difference with a major yeah, distinction here, and I'm yeah. arguing the state does not have any evidence in this probable cause affidavit to substantiate this high-level charge. What, what Mr. Miller is not mentioning, and I think what the salient fact that shows why this is harassment, why this is malicious. Your Honor, he's writing these letters from prison, where he was sentenced to prison for aggravated stalking of the same victim. Again, Judge, they would have to prove that that the the the, the contact had no legitimate person uh, purpose, and that there was uh, I'm sorry, severe emotional distress. Right. Nothing. Not, none of that is alleged in this probable cause affidavit. So, in order for the state, the in order for the court to find probable cause, you would have to go outside the probable cause right. affidavit. Okay, well, based on the totality of the circumstances, this gentleman gets convicted and goes to prison for aggravated stalking on a woman. Her name is Miss Joanna Napolitano. Then while this defendant is in state prison, he starts writing her letters. The court believes that that amounts to aggravated stalking. Judge, will... just to clear... To clarify the situation, Mr. Francisco was not convicted. He pled the case out. There is a difference there as well. Okay. So it's your opinion that if somebody pleads the case out and goes to state prison, they are not convicted of the crime? Have you ever been arrested? Uh, judge, you, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. A plea, a plea is not a conviction. He was not convicted by a jury of his peers. He took a plea deal that was offered to him. Yes. There's a big difference between those two things. Months so prison, three subsequently, years he takes the stand in a subsequent legal matter, and they say 
Have you ever been convicted of a crime? He can say, no, I've never been convicted of a crime, even though I went to state prison because I pled guilty or no contest. That could not be this your point, a, Mr. Miller. This is a semantical argument, okay, well, Judge. There yes, you go. of course, he cannot say that. We're going to move on. All right, okay. now. Um, your Honor, as far as Bond, I understand he is currently incarcerated in state prison, and there's a transfer There's a transfer order in this case, I guess I'm guessing for him to be arraigned before Judge Cohen. That being said, my concern is, is if, and this is why I think Bond is relevant in this matter, is if he is released from state prison while this case is still pending. As the court is aware, he's currently sentenced to prison for aggravated stalking against the same alleged victim. 2014, he was convicted a violation of a domestic violence injunction against a different alleged victim. In 2012, he was convicted of harassing a witness or victim in violation of a domestic violence injunction against the same alleged victim in this case. In 2012, she was much younger than four and a half years. He was convicted of domestic violence battery against the same alleged victim in this case. 2000, burglary of a structure. 2000, burglary of a dwelling with a violation of probation, sentenced to 47 and a half months state prison. Your Honor, I believe that if at some point he is eligible for release on this case, there is nothing the court can do short of a significant bond and pretrial release with the GPS monitor level one to ensure that he will stay away from the alleged victim in this I, case. He was just brought down from state prison, I believe, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Miller, anything you want to say about his ability to bond? Yeah. Judge, he has no ability to bond. He's got a Department of Correction hold on him. I got it. So you bonds to be two hundred fifty thousand dollars today, based on your criminal record, the facts of the case, and uh, this court is ongoing concern that you uh, will not uh, comply with the court order. It does seem what from prison you are continuing to uh, carry out criminal activity. No contact directly or indirectly with Joanna Napolitano directly or indirectly. You must stay 500 feet from her at all times. I'm going to order a pretrial release with the GPS monitor if he ever makes that. I'm going to waive the cost. Thank you, sir. No contact. Sir, come on back real quick. No contact directly or indirectly will be allowed with Miss Joanna Napolitano directly or indirectly. Thank you. Okay, now. I see uh, Yandi Aria. Judge, Mr. Aria? Yeah. Aria is president of the Maine. He has declined the services of the public defender. Okay. Uh, domestic battery by strangulation, battery, sort of domestic violence related, and battery causing bodily harm. Court finds probable cause, state. Are there any priors on this job? No priors, Judge. No? Okay. Um, over the net, children's and 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 children's 11 years. I have a master's in business administration. I, um, I've been working for AT&T for eight years. Okay. And uh, I have two kids. I understand. How old are your children? Allison is five. Matthew is two. Do you have any money in the bank? $50,000 in the bank, $40,000 in my 401k. And do you, uh, do you own your own home? I am buying a house. Okay. All right. And, uh, no I went to the. Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if it makes a difference. When the police called me yesterday, I went and I told them um, my side of the story. Uh, so I wasn't running away and I, you know, turned myself in to give my side of the story, and that's why uh, that, I got here. That is noted here in the police report. Did you see that? Okay. Now, uh, do you have visitation rights with the uh, with the children? I have the children half of the time, 12 nights of the month. They're actually with me, that are my mom's today. Okay. All right. So, uh, there's no criminal record, I imagine, right? Okay. So, uh, 
So I'm going to set bonds on these matters, but um, I'm going to, uh, let me see. No contact. You're here and here? I'm going to set your bond on account one at five thousand, count two at a thousand, three at a thousand. Total bond today is seven thousand um, dollars. I'm going to order that you have no direct contact with uh, no direct contact with Ruby or Ria. Are you on probation? No con direct contact with John Sotolongo. No direct contact. You can have indirect contact if you go through your mother or another family member regarding the children. Um, that's fine. I'm going to order that you stay 500 feet from both of those people at all times. I'm not saying and I'm not modifying your visitation. You can continue to visit with the children and pick them up, but you have to stay 500 feet from those two people. So have your mother do it, have somebody else pick them up and drop them off. Now you'll see another judge in about a month from now, and at that time, the next judge can modify what we've done today, all right? Okay. So 500 feet from both those adults, no direct contact, Indirect contact is allowed, and you're not allowed to possess your guns or weapons, all right? Okay. Now, I want to be clear about one thing. I am not keeping you from your children, and I am not modifying your visitation. Your visitation should stay the same with the children, but uh, I'm just giving you some stay-away orders from the adults, okay? Thank you. So, I hope you understand what I'm doing. I don't want anyone yeah. later on after this hearing to say that I said you can't see your children. I'm not doing that. You can see your children. Just make arrangements to do that, all right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Court, we are ready to proceed. Uh, defendant, can you see the case? This Israel Muscadin, and it's uh, page number... 27. Let me get Mr. Atrius oh, here real quick. Oh, I called you over a special Thank you, uh, case here. Awesome. Awesome. I got a call awesome. from um, a police officer with the city of Fort Lauderdale. She's the homeless outreach police officer. Okay. And she called me to tell me this morning that Patricia McCollum has been arrested again. Yes. And this is the woman who takes off her clothes in public and sits on the, the benches. We've had her come through, heavy set woman. And she uh, apparently was trespassed from a hospital last night. And it was a big kind of problem. And so she was arrested, she's in the jail. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I told the officer to be here at 9.15. I'm going to give you the paperwork. You can take a look at it, and then when the officer gets there, we'll... just your honor, just frankly for the record, there's, I don't know there's how much can be done because I see one of her holds is a no bond hold out of Judge Lorenz Mental Health no, Division. I, I understand okay. that, right. but I'm just looking. Okay, so if she's medical. Just stand by. The police officer is going to be here at 9:15. Okay. So. Now we need to call up uh, uh, Israel Muscadin. Yes. Israel, what's the last name? Mus Muscadin. Muscadin? I'm sorry. 27. 27, thank you. Brian. And. Missy no, Israel Muscadin. Muscadin. Judge, they're working on it. Okay, okay. can you give us a medical thing? Do you want the city here too, Judge, for this? Uh, you know what? If she's medically reset, I probably don't. Excuse me? could be different. Well, she's medical reset. She's not coming up, right? Right. I, I may reset her for tomorrow. So we'll, we'll find out. Now, uh, let me call up the warrants real quick. Sir, in the front row, you're an intern, right? Yes, sir. Got it, okay. Now, in the back row, may I help you back there? Are you here on a case? Yeah. Are you together? No, we're together. Who's here first? 
Oh. Come on up, sir. No, no, no. The man in the blue top. Oh. And we, I try to call him first in, first out. There you go. Go ahead. Which uh, case are you on? Good morning, sir. Hi. Good morning. I am um, here with my son, uh, Ashton McNeil. Ashton McNeil, please. What was he arrested for? I'm sorry. It's page 22. Ashton McNeil? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm sorry. Son. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, if I, if I could. Give me a, let me find the paperwork. Okay. Keep going here. Now, Mr. McNeil, you've been charged with Thank you. possession with intent to sell, deliver oxycodone. Count two, possession with intent to sell, deliver hydromorphone. And count three, failure to wear a safety belt. Now, the court will find probable cause. Steve, you uh, no, have no prior sir. No? Court. Okay. Court. Who, who's this? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, an arrest he made yesterday. Um, could you let the deputy know okay. I actually just got so raise your right a supplemental hand. report? Do you swear we're and firm to tell the truth? I don't, truth this, I don't think I'm going to. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any way now, I can uh, have his cell number so I can give him I'm sure he's sorry. right now. What's your name? Right? Yeah. Andre McNeil Sr. Okay, nice to meet you, Mr. McNeil. Okay. Uh, yeah. So your son's charged with... Uh, some drug okay, charges here. Let me find out. Yeah, could you just have him give Does me he have a call, criminal record? Um, when, no, no, Judge. Uh, could you have him give me a call when he, when he wakes up, and I'll just update him with what's going on. No criminal record. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. You have both, you're both you my numbers, right? the in the back. Thank you. He's yeah. the, I appointed him as the defender okay. of, uh, of the woman. There you go. Okay. Just chit-chat with him if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, uh, sir, tell us about your son. Is he working? No, Your Honor, this young man just graduated from high school and When did has, he graduate? Just here a few weeks ago? I'm sorry? No, he just a few weeks ago he numbers. graduated? Yes, sir. Deerfield High. Okay. And he is currently, uh, right now, accepting a scholarship to Alabama, uh, I'm sorry, to Arkansas Baptist okay. on a football scholarship. Okay. And um, thank, thank I just don't want the opportunity to, to pass through and he gets stuck here in the system. I agree. It's That's why I'm here. I understand. I, understand. I have four boys, and he's the youngest. Okay, and uh, you know it's a, it's a shame. Uh, he allegedly there, there's a text message here that without the text message, I would think this is possession. But allegedly, oh, there's, judge. yes, sir. Uh, along those lines, if I may make an argument briefly, um, there is no nexus between this text message and the alleged intent to distribute. If he said, um, "Am I going to get a cut if I keep selling these oxycodones or these uh, hydromorphone for you?" That might be different. But that, uh, otherwise, there's no nexus between this text message and the uh, the prescriptions that he was alleged to have uh, control. Furthermore, we don't know that this alleged Tina got the right number when she sent that text message. Right, Could have well, been sending it to anybody. His name is not in the um, in, in, in the text message. Yes, sir. Um, looking at the totality of the situation, the court will find this problem because he literally gets a text message from a woman who says, do you want me to keep selling these for you? So, uh, that being said, is he going to live with you when he's out of custody, sir? Well, he currently lives with his mother, but if you need me to take responsibility. No, 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 no. I'm going to release him today on his own recognizance. He's going to get a pre-trial release. He needs to be across the street today before 4 o'clock. So when he's released from jail, he walks down the street, goes to the pre-trial release. He's going to uh, be drug tested every week. Yes, sir. Uh, if he fails a drug test, he'll be re-arrested, put back in jail. Um, and if he finds out... This is where you need to Mr. be. Mr. Ashton McNeil, if the court yes, finds out you're engaging in any of this activity after you're released from custody, you'll be rearrested and put back in jail. All right? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, sir. Where you see it's right down the street. He the jail is right through that wall. Okay. He's got to be right across the street over here before four o'clock today. Just right across the street where the parking garage is. They have an office in that parking garage, right okay. on the corner of the street. Just goes from there to there, and then when he gets over here, when he gets out of jail, he can call you to come pick him up. It, it probably usually takes about three or four hours before they release him. He may not be out till maybe a little afternoon, you know? Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Okay. State, are we ready to go on? Uh, if, if they have, we're ready, Your Honor, if they have him at the jail. They have Israel Muscat in over there. They got it. Could you turn on that mic for me, please? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, before uh, Your Honor reads the charges, if uh, I could be heard, there seems to be an issue with the booking. I understand. Let me really quick just advise sure. him. Sure. Right. Of course. To remain silent. Okay. Turn on that mic for me, please. Mr. Uh... Okay. Mr. Muscat, do you speak English? Yes, sir. You have the right to remain silent. You're not required or expected to make any comment today. What is that? What's your first name? Jose is my M. Let's do one thing at a time. Just listen to me real quick. You have the right okay. to remain silent today. You are not required or expected to make any comment, any statement, any explanation, any excuse about why you were arrested or what led up to you being arrested. Frankly, you shouldn't say anything about why you were arrested. You should just remain silent and talk to an attorney in private after this hearing. But if you give up the right to remain silent, you begin to speak today about your arrest, what led up to you being arrested, or any of the accusations against you. Whatever you say can and will be used against you. Everything today is being recorded. Do you understand what I've explained? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, do you have your own attorney? Do you have a private attorney? Uh, when, when I get out, I, I hired one when I get out. Okay. All right. Now, just... Give Sign that piece of paper, Runner. declining I'm, the services of the public. Am I, am I going to get a, a, a bond today? Yes, get yes. Well, well, then, no, not necessarily, Your Honor. Well, have you been provided with two uh, PC affidavits, Your Honor? Hold on. There's two separate PC affidavits, one for each charge. Here, if you want to take a look at the second one. Are they, are they the same? Just the, oh, where is the same? Two different victims. Oh, the content's the same, yeah. The content's the same, Your Honor. The reason being, the charge is different on each. If you notice, on the second report, the charge is uh, lewd and lascivious uh, molestation on a victim less than 12. Because this the second alleged victim is nine years old. There was an error in booking when he was charged with two counts of molestation of a victim between 12 and 16. So which count is the less count, than Count two should be less than 12. I'm sorry? I don't have my glasses. And there's another issue here. If you read the first uh, paragraph in each of the... Uh, wait a minute. Let me go to the first. Do you have the first PC there? Yes, Look at the first paragraph. The first PC, the last line on that first page. The defendant was 9, and then it has 12. Look at that. Do you see that? CM is 12. Yes, it's, it's, it's Scrivener's error. Detective Roussel is here who prepared the PC affidavits. If you want to inquire, your honor, but okay, my understanding CM is 12 years old uh, at the time of the occurrence. The other one is, is nine years old. Nine years old. He's nine years old. He's currently nine years old. Okay, so, all right, um, now, so you've been charged on count one with lewd and lascivious molestation of a child between the age of, age of 12 to 16 years old, where you were over 18. Count two, lewd and lascivious molestation on a child less than 12 years old, where you're over the age of 18. Now, um... State, are you seeking a foreclosed bond and release conditions on count two? Yes, Your Honor. Count two is a first degree felony punishment by light. Now, 
Uh, let me place you under oath, sir. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, state, would you like to uh, go ahead and make a presentation on why you believe that this is a uh, yeah. first degree, it's a first degree PBL, but why there's proof evidence? Your Honor, I would first to argue that the allegations made by the alleged victim. Uh, name uh, specifically the allegations in on page uh, on page three in the second paragraph relating to the uh, incident that occurred while they were living at the house in Hollywood, which satisfied the elements of the city's molestation. It is alleged in the sworn affidavit that she was nine, she is, she is currently nine years old. So the incident obviously must have occurred before she was turned 12. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I would also argue the strength of the evidence that um, not only another daughter, uh, and, and, and uh, Detective Versailles makes a point of noting Everyone was separated. None of these statements were taken in the presence of any of, of the other children or the uh, stepdaughter. Uh, the, uh, there's specificity in the allegations, Your Honor. It is not just general allegations. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the other, uh, her sister, is, has made similar allegations. The step, uh, the stepdaughter has made similar allegations. And I would also know, Your Honor, if there was a, a tip received, and I understand at this point, you know, help me, Howard. Even without the name of the tipster, Your Honor, as the court's aware, under the law, uh, the court can give credibility based on the specificity and uh, with the tip. This that would seem to indicate that the person does have knowledge of the situation. Both the names of the children were given; their ages. Uh, what are they saying? Uh, yeah, uh, also, information involving his stepdaughter, whose name was given. Specific information given about their mother that was also corroborated by this uh, by the information received from the children. So I think that there is a lot of credibility with this tip that was received from Holly Howard, Your Honor. So I think based on the totality of the circumstances, there is proof of evidence. The proof, there, the proof of that uh, proof of guilt is evident, or the presumption is great. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so, um, you're a detective with the city of uh, Hollywood, correct? Yes. And uh, your last name is Rousseau. So, now, on the first, uh, first uh, 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 it says the last line that the, the defendant it says the defendant was nine. Then it has parens 12. Did you mean the victim was nine? If I did, Your Honor, yes. I'll work in later when this lesson. And then it would be nine. Yes. Got it. So, uh, maybe, well, Your Honor, I mean, we do have, you, we, he's under oath. We have sworn testimony today. No, if, I'm just saying if they ever went up on appeal and somebody read this, they wouldn't necessarily know this, this uh, detective. Well, if they went on appeal, they would have to provide a transcript okay. of the hearing so, that he's on the record stating that. Here's something uh, I want to clarify. You spoke with an adult victim also, correct? Yes, Judge. How old is that adult victim? She's 23. Okay. And, uh, tell me what happened when you went to the, you knocked on the door of the home and you spoke with her. Tell me what happened. The 23 year old was the one that answered the door when I went to my back door. Um, I could see the other children in the background, so I didn't want to speak in front of the other children. I asked her to come outside. Um, I told her that we received a tip about some inappropriate touching that may have happened in the house. She immediately started crying and said it happened to her. Okay. All right. And then when you spoke with the 12-year-old uh, and the 9-year-old, their stories about what had happened, they were consistent and similar to what the 23-year-old told you to happen to them? Yes, Judge. By this defendant? Yes, Judge. Okay. And uh, do they have, just to follow up with the state as to they you know, see an opportunity they had to get their stories straight or they were in the same room? Anything like that? No, Judge. Okay. Because you're not working. And uh, 
Do you think the last uh, incident happened with yeah. either the 9 or the we 12 cash, We believe it was in the, the last five weeks, sometime within the last five we weeks. Do these emergency isolated incidents? No. Or was this ongoing we sexual were, abuse of these two girls? I, I believe it's ongoing, and there's still more interviews to, to be done. Okay. Now, I noticed that you didn't charge or arrest him on what happened in 2023. Tell us why. Yes, it was out of our jurisdiction. That allegedly yeah. happened in Miami? In Miami and Georgia. Yes, no, no. Detective Purcell. Uh, have you or are you going to be notifying? Yes, the Dane other County agencies. Authorities. Yes. Okay. Anything else? No, 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 so the court today uh, <laughs> is going to find proof, evident presumption, greatest to count to. Did not in fact, um, oh, so a little act on a female under the age of 12. Like, uh, I'm gaining weight and I'm eating healthy. He's like, when you're stressed out, your cortisol levels are very high. It's very hard to lose weight. Yeah. Like, so let me ask you a question. Are you, are you currently employed? Yes, sir. What type of work do you do? Uh, uh, fertilizer and, and a cashier at the gas station. Do you have any money in the bank? I, yeah. Okay, how much do you think you have? Maybe $300. All right. Do you own your own home? No. Do you have any... Uh, financial means to bond out today yeah you're yeah. not going to have a bond today on count two but in the future you do have financial means to bond out yeah yeah if, if, if i get a bond sir so today the court will uh find on count let me see Oops, i have this backwards sorry michael yeah, badges right. count two no bond. The court finds proof, evident, presumption, greatest to count two. Count one, the court finds there is probable cause. The court will set your bond on count one at $1 million. Count two, you'll be held without bond. The court believes there is uh, very strong evidence against you that you have been... $1 million? Yes, yes, sir. The court believes this is ongoing criminal activity. We have a 23-year-old girl. So let me clarify something. Your yeah, Honor, all this, all this stuff sir, was made up. Stop for a moment. How long ago did the 23-year-old claim she was molested? She's 23 now. It occurred from the time she was 10 to 12 years old. Okay, so at least 13 years ago, you were allegedly molesting a woman and your, a young girl and your family who's now an adult. Now, you are allegedly molesting two young girls who are in your family. Your this honor. is not an isolated incident. This is ongoing criminal activity. You represent, you represent a danger to both the young girls and perhaps the adult also because she is a witness and the two young girls are witnesses to your behavior. You're facing very serious criminal penalties. Your court notes this your Honor, the case. All this the was facts made up, Your Honor. I didn't... In the affidavit, and the court also notes the testimony the court has received today. You'll be held on count one for $1 million. Count two, you'll be held without bond. The court will order that you have no contact with CM directly or indirectly, Charlie Mike. No contact with that person directly or indirectly. No contact with DM, that is Delta Mike, directly or indirectly. And what is the L LJ. LJ, the adult female, LJ, Lima Juliet. No contact with her directly or indirectly at any time. Anything else? You'll be held without bond. Thank you. Thank you, were you arrested by yourself? Well, I think that's the one scheduling. Okay. You'll sit over there and you can sign up the public defender. Give me that. Okay. Let's speak with uh, Silva Castillo Rodriguez. Ma'am, do you swear or affirm to translate from English to Spanish, Spanish, English, truthfully and to the best of your ability? I do. Patricia Gristo, certified court interpreter. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Castillo Rodriguez. Buenos dias, Señora Castillo Rodriguez. You are charged with a domestic battery on your husband. Se le acusa de agresión corporal 
intrafamiliar contra su esposo. It's alleged you scratched your, husband fa your husband's face multiple times. Se alega de que usted le arañó la cara a su esposo múltiples veces. And your husband had multiple injuries. Su esposo sostuvo Steve, you have any, uh, sostuvo lastimaduras múltiples. No, 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 no All right, ma'am, how long have you lived here in South Florida? Señora, ¿cuánto hace que vive usted en el sur de la Florida? Okay. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor, I'm unable to hear the hear. defendant. I think that mic is not on. Yeah. 14 years. Do you have children? ¿Tiene usted hijos? Sí. Yes. How old are your children, ma'am? ¿Cuáles son las edades de sus hijos, señora? Dos años. Two years old. Do they live with you? Does your child live with you? ¿El menor de edad la criatura vive con usted? Sí. Yes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what it says. You don't have to read it. Is Alejandro the father of the child? Is Alejandro the father of the child? Yes. Ma'am, I'm going to set your bond today. Señora, voy a fijar su fianza hoy. At one thousand dollars. En mil dólares. The court will order that you do not have direct contact with Alejandro. Su señoría ordena que no puede tener contacto directo con Alejandro. Contact Usted puede tener contacto indirecto. Contact him through a friend or family member. Contacto con él a través de una amistad o miembro de la familia. Usted deberá mantenerse apartada a 500 pies de Alejandro en todo momento. That is where he lives. Works, goes to school. Y eso aplica a donde él vive, trabaja o la escuela. And you're not allowed to possess any guns or weapons while you're on release. Y a usted no se le permite la tenencia de ninguna arma de fuego o arma mientras que está en libertad. Ma'am, for the time being, you're probably going to have to find somewhere else to stay. Señora, mientras tanto, probablemente va a tener que buscar un lugar donde quedarse. Thank you, ma'am. Gracias, señor. Judge, Go ahead, sir. before you dismiss her, could you please advise her the consequences of failing to abide with the court's stay away order? And can we make some uh, accommodations for the children? Un momento, señora, por favor. You have to comply with what I've ordered today. Señora, usted tiene que cumplir con lo que yo le he ordenado hoy. If you don't comply, you could be rearrested. Si usted no cumple, pudiera volver a ser arrestada. Also, ma'am, you're allowed to see your child if that can be arranged through a third party. También, señora, a usted se le permite ver su criatura si es que se pueden hacer los arreglos a través de terceros. Thank you. Gracias. Ma'am, that's all we're going to need right now, right? Yes, sir. Jesse, uh, we're going to call up the Patricia McCollum case. I don't think she's able to come to order. Thank you, Your Honor. Hello. Can I have uh, everyone raise your right hand? Do you, well, Mr. H, you don't. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. All right. Now, ma'am, tell us your name. Officer Sandy Downs Kiesling, Fort Lauderdale Police Homeless Outreach Officer. Right. Okay. Thank you. And your name, sir? Uh, Battalion Chief Daniel Oatmeyer with Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue. Okay. Now. We have the case today of Patricia McCollum. Ms. McCollum, from what I understand, is not feeling well or she can't come to court this morning. So uh, I, I got a call from um, um, the officer we have in court, um, Downs Kesserling, right? Kiesling. Kiesling, sorry about that. It's okay. I got a call this morning on my cell phone uh, before court started telling me that uh, Ms. McCollum had been arrested and that. We needed to take special uh, care and special attention to this matter. Uh, she's homeless. 
She's uh, been arrested many times, and it's an ongoing problem. And uh, I'm well aware of Ms. McCollum. I mean, she's been through here quite a few times. And frankly, I personally witnessed, and I've said this before, I witnessed Ms. McCollum sitting nude on a, a bus bench on Federal Highway at Oakland Park Boulevard, right by the Target there, probably about three months ago. And, uh, just, and, the, and cars were stopping and people were pulling over and watching and taking pictures and it was a big deal. And uh, so now she's here today for trespassing at Imperial Point Hospital where she allegedly caused a ruckus up there um, last evening, correct? Correct. All right, do you want to tell us about that, ma'am? Were you uh, there? I, I was not there for the ruckus. They had called right. me because I'm the homeless outreach officer. Right. So the two officers on scene did not know what to do. They really did not want to arrest her. because they, She refused to leave. So they were there for a couple of hours. She still refused to leave. So when I responded, uh, upon us talking, I said it might be best in her best interest because of the amount of times that she has been arrested to go a different route this time. And also with the amount of times she's been Baker acted, nothing's been able to be done. So yeah. with this arrest, I'm hoping that maybe court projects, who I've contacted De De uh, Debbie Perry through court projects, and that she's willing to take a look at her file and see if she uh, meets the criteria for court projects. Okay. And I spoke with her this morning. Got it. Now, so is there anything you'd like to add to this matter? Um, the only thing, I mean, we we run on her a lot, transport her a lot, and it averages out past a year and a half, probably once a week. We well. I'll tell you this, and I was told by another Fort Lauderdale police officer who's not here today, and, and I'm just going to tell you for what it's worth, and you may agree or disagree, this officer told me a month or two ago that it was that <coughs> officer's opinion that Ms. McCollum plays the system, that she intentionally gets Baker acted so she has somewhere to go for a couple days and she uh, can take a bath, take a shower in the hospital. She eats, she goes out, and she does something else like take her clothes off to get Baker acted again, to get transported to the hospital again. And that, that's, that's what the officer told me. So um, now, is there any, uh, do you have any comment about that? I, I don't know if you do or not, or? Uh, I, I definitely believe that she, it's, uh, she's a mental health consumer. Right. And so sometimes she understands what she's doing, and other times she doesn't understand what she's doing. It just depends on the day. But right. she does need some permanent placement. That She needs she needs help. She doesn't she, need to be in a jail. Is she willing to get placed, do you think, if we could get her placed? She told me last night, I rode the ambulance back with them, that nobody can seem to get her any permanent placement, and that she'd be willing to go into a living assisted facility or anywhere that we could get her. Right. And that I have done nothing to help her, except buy her clothes. But you have done a lot to help her, right? Yes. She bought her clothes on her own out of her own pocket. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, four X or five. And they're hard to find. Maybe we could just immediately transfer this to Judge Wren. I will. And then maybe, how would they get notified so she could appear? Uh, would we know if it would be tomorrow? I don't, she, I don't know. Um, it's March check. Yeah, can you go over to March and let March work sure. this out? Yes, so what I'm going to do is, uh, Point, Jara. Mr. Mr. Point, Mr. McLawrence. There's two cases, Your Honor. Well, there's three. One is a Hollywood case, so you may want to appoint Mr. Shate on the 20A case. Now, 20A would be not a Hollywood, but what, Pompano, maybe? Oh, I apologize. Yes. So, I'll appoint. appoint Count now. three, Judge, is a, is a misdemeanor case. We ask the court to transfer it to Central, please. I'm going to appoint FJM. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, if you look on the, if you look on the um, arrest report, you're I'm not trying to interrupt the court, um, but there are two other cases, two case numbers, uh, which are 10A, 10, ML 10A, provided for two orders. Okay. Okay. I'm going to send count one here, today at 250 dollars. I'm going to revoke her, her bond on count three. Now, you know what? I'm not going to revoke She can't make it. I'm going to revoke Leave count three at 500. Count two, she's being held no bond. I'm going to appoint F.J. McLawrence on count one. Count two is going to be the public defender. Count three is the public defender. 
Right, right, those are all state cases, so I don't need a point shape. Judge, yes. could the court please transfer count three to central? And uh, if we could have orders um, appointing us to represent her on this case, we can get these files open more quickly and uh, expedite the process. It's, it's, it's already in judgment around. Once you transferred it to mental health, it's obviously. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I, and we'll go and speak to Marjorie and see if we can expedite it for maybe tomorrow morning. Sure. Which no. Which paper is he signing? Maybe so today. Signing all of them. Is that possible? I'm saying when I, when I write, you write parents or not? You write what's there. No, I don't think you're going to get it. Because she's up at the other jail. Okay. 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 Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. That's when we fix it. Hello, sir. May I help you? Good morning, Anna. I'm here for. I'm gonna take care of this. You need something? Thank you. So, whatever it is. Thank you, Vincent. For Nikita Myers. Now, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning again. I am here for Nikita Miles. She's on page 11. Smiles. Family asked me to be here. No, that's okay. What do you need? What paper? Yes, see, Nikita Miles. Yes, sir. Okay, Miss Miles, you've been charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, aggravated assault. Um, the court finds probable cause. Um, allegedly, allegedly uh, drove her car towards a woman standing in a yard, drove off the roadway onto the swale. The woman jumped out of the way, except the man could not get out of the way, Deontay. Deontay Wright. His car was hit by the defendant's car, allegedly throwing him up in the air. And uh, he landed on the pavement. He had to be trauma alerted to Broward General Hospital. A large laceration to his right knee. Nine staples to the back of his head to close uh, a wound. He had road rash. And uh, all parties possibly identified the defendant. She admitted to striking Deontay with her vehicle and fled the area. Okay, now, quick funds probable cause state of their priors. One moment, Your Honor. <coughs> sir, are you prepared to bond this woman from the jail? If she's given a bond, yes, sir. Let's go. Mr. Miller, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of this defendant? Judge, Ms. Miles has declined the services of the public defender. She intends to hire private counsel. Okay, ma'am, uh, let me ask you, what do you do for work right now, Ms. Miles? Private nurse and home. All right, how long do you live down here in South Florida? Do you have any money in the bank? Excuse me? No. Do you have any money not in the bank? No, no money. Do you have land or property here in South Florida? No. Go ahead, Steve. Your Honor, she has no record. Do you have a... Any, uh, I mean, frankly, this is one of those cases where I understand no record is considered a, obviously a mitigating factor, but I think this is one of those situations where the aggravating factor factors just heavily outweigh the mitigating factors. Maybe you're not allowed to have any contact with Yolanda Bennett or Dion Wright, Deontay Wright, and you have to stay 500 feet from both of them. I'm going to be asking for a $50,000 bond on one, a $25,000 bond on two, and pretrial release with the GPS monitor. Okay. Uh, today, the court, ma'am, based on the level of violence, the court's concern for the safety of 
both of the victims. I'm going to order 25,000 on one, 25,000 on count two. Your total bond today is $50,000. Pre-trial release GPS monitor. The court will waive the cost of the monitor. The court based its bond on this court's great concern for the safety of both of the uh, the victims, the alleged uh, use of the vehicle, and the damage done to Mr. Deontay Wright. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge. Okay, now I see you right here. Come on up. Right here. Mr. Nikita, you have to pay for what you did. Which okay. case you here? Okay. What is that? Hold on one minute. Kevin Eastford? Yes, see Mr. Pierre. When you were Pierre. You may know where it is in this time. Do you have a private attorney or do you want to come with me? Where's Mr. Pierre? We'll pay. Calvin Melendez, they signed here. Okay. Uh, okay. Right to remain silent. Calvin Melendez, I hope that you're clear. When was he arrested? Uh, he came himself uh, because he was violated the court date. And he came himself yesterday. Arrested by yourself? Melendez is not for And they kept him. Melendez is not for do we see Pierre on the back? Oh, on, on the screen here? Uh, not sure. On the screen? I'll, I'll check on the glass here. Mr. No? We'll wait. I don't see him on the I see, I, I see him right here. Pre-trial and the KPS, I don't think they're going to bring him. It's, he, he, they're not going to bring him. He's going to go. He's going to go straight to division when they give him a court date. He's not going there now. Today. No, because it's a KPS and a, and a violation of pre-trial warrant. Who's the judge? Uh, just one moment. Fifteen one seven five zero CF ten eight. It's Judge Robinson. Yes. Yeah, and uh, he'll, now that he's back in custody, when the clerk's office processes the paperwork, they'll give him a new, I would imagine, give him a court date. Hey, Marge, can we do that real quick? He's not going to be in here today. Okay. My secretary will no, walk right through here. Walk right through here. Okay. My secretary is going to take you and tell you when this court date is going to be. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, Paul. Paul. Unemployment, 
veterans benefits, child support, rental income, dividends, or interest, and savings, and social bonds. Do you own any houses or homes? Now, um, Nessie, Megan Helms, Aaron Huerto, Karanda Jordan, and Diane Ward. Megan Helms, you know where she is? Page five. Page five. Your Honor, Helms is a medical researcher. We're going to pass Helms right on through, no bond. How about Aaron? Uh, where is Aaron? Aaron. Come on. There he is. Uh, Main out of state hold, no bond. Right, down the middle, out the door. Down the middle, out the door, please. Karanda, Karanda Jordan. Karanda. Bonded. Page eight. Bonded. How about Diane Ward? President Domain. Violation of probation, no bond. You're going to see the judge on Tuesday. Mara Fairley, Samantha Allen, Melvin Davis, Sabatini Fairley? Miller. Judge, this Miss Fairley. Miss Fairley uh, violated probation, no bond. We're going to see the Allen. judge on Tuesday. Who? Samantha Allen. Samantha? President of Maine? Violating probation, three, count, uh, three counts, uh, no bond on one, two, and four, count three is 5,000. How about Melvin Davis? You're going to see the judge on Tuesday. Violating uh, probation, no bond. Sabatini Miller. Oh, Sabatini Miller. Davis. Up the middle, Davis. Uh, June 1st, uh, July 1st. Sabatini Miller. What page, sir? Uh, page 14. Bonded. Bonded, Judge. Got it. What about Lorenzo Brazil? President of the Maine, Bill Jellin is his attorney. Okay, what about uh, Mayo Bonetti Ismail Quizanda, Patrick Knight, and Rudolph Hill? Who do you want, Judge? How about Lorenzo Brazil? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you dismissed me. No, Brazil, where Judge, are you, sir? This is Mr. Brazil. Bill Jellin is his attorney. Okay. Um, I sent him an email this morning. Did you? Count one is 502-750. Thank you, sir. How about Mayo Vanette Ismail? Uh, sir, violating probation, no bond. Todrick Knight? Your Honor, Knight's in courtroom 6750. Got it. No bond. How about Rudolph Hill? Wait, no, no, no. Jonathan who, please? Frederick, page 24, declined. Rudolph Hill? Alberto yes. Gomez. Sir, violating probation. You have a hold for U.S. Marshals. Both no bond. Markel Lucas, Matthew Gaboni, Michael Badgett, and James McNeil. Line Are you Markel? Up. Markel Lucas, Lucas, Judge. Violating probation, two counts, no bond. Matthew Gaboni. Violation of probation, no bond. Michael Badgett. You're going to see the judge on Monday. Badgett violating duty control, four counts, no bond. James McNeil. Judge Michael Badgett's attorney is Scott Rubinchek. Does he know? Did you give him on notice? I did not, Judge. Does, uh, did you talk to your attorney yet? And you're going to sign a date at the bottom, okay? Okay, hold on. We know Rubinchek's number. Do you know his number? Yes, sir. What is it? 954. 
424-1488. You're going to see the judge on Tuesday. All right, I just told your attorney he knows about it, sir. Thank you. How about James McNeil? Sir, violating probation, no bond. How about Kedron Davis, Tony Williams, and Mario Masur? Yes, sir. Rala. Kedron Davis? David? Violating probation, no bond. Tony Williams? North Broward? Sir, violating, uh, let me see, count one and two are misdemeanor warrants. A total of 1,500. Count three and four, felony warrants, no bond. Thank you. How about Mario Mesurala? He's on the hospital. That's a no bond. It's going straight to the judge. How about Henry Richardson, Gabriel Nones, and Luis Padron Herrera? Are you Richardson? Is that Gabriel Nones? Which? This is Mr. Richardson. Ramos, sir, violating sorry. Pro, uh, parole, probation, sir. Thank you. No bond. Okay. Good 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 Who are you? Sir, violating okay, probation. Yeah, no bond. Thank you. Can you see the judge Luis on the drone? Pedro Herrera. Pedro Herrera. Luis Pedro. He's here, judge. He's approaching. So violating probation, no bonds. Okay, here. Call them and tell them to send someone out to find you up. <laughs> Call that number and ask them to send someone out to find you up. Okay. Back. I'm going to call one out of order. Uh, Richard Jacks, J A C Q U E S. Richard Jacks. Good page number, Judge? You know, I don't. <clears throat> Is that him right there? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Jacks, you have the right to remain silent today. That means you're not required or expected to say anything today, make any comments about your arrest, what led up to you being arrested. But if you give up the right to remain silent, whatever you say, cannon will be used against you. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, do you have a private attorney? No, sir. Okay. Do you, sir, do you, you intend to hire a private counsel? You were charged with compiling, entering computer pornography. You're also. Count two, charged with possession, control, viewing, depiction of child sex conduct. Count three, misrepresenting your age, using the computer to solicit or seduce a child. Count three, it making extortion or threats. The court finds there is probable cause. State, does this defendant have any criminal record? No, Your Honor. Sir, uh, Mr. Miller, do you have anything on this defendant? Judge, I have not had an opportunity to interview Mr. Jock. I have no objection to the court inquiry. Sir, how long have you lived down here in South Florida? All my life. What? Uh, 22 years. Okay, and uh, are you currently employed? Uh, yes, sir. What type of work is that? Uh, restaurant job. Do you have any money in the bank? No, sir. All right, do you own land or property here in South Florida? No, sir. Do you, do you have any financial resources to bond out with? Not uh, that I know of, sir. Okay. Uh, do you have family down here in South Florida, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to state, um, I'm going to just put into the record, um, it says South Florida Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force received information from the city of Napa Police Department, Napa, California 
that an individual was in possession of child pornography and extorting, threatening a child victim in order to obtain pornography from her. The suspect has a history of soliciting young females online using various social media networks, develops online relationships with females, persuades them to create porno pornography uh, online with webcam footage, and later extorts them, threatens them, in an effort to obtain more explicit, explicit pornographic images. And uh, it says that uh, this defendant um, lured a, a 12 year old girl or convinced her to engage in this type of activity, claiming that he was also a teenager at the time. And uh, the police went through his computer and found ample, uh, ample uh, messages between the two. Uh, he says he's 16, about to turn 17. And it says that at one point, this defendant, it says uh, chat logs relevant, said he possessed the video of a female BR and threatened to show the video public if she did not follow instructions. And uh, she told him that she was 12 years old. And uh, the defendant allegedly waived his rights, made uh, admissions to doing this. And uh, allegedly keeping the video and pictures of her and uh, allegedly admitted to threatening to expose the 12 year old's nude pictures if she did not do what he demanded see do you have any comment about Bob? your honor uh i'm concerned oh, I believe also there's something else we need to put in the record here that it says here that the defendant threatened to maliciously ruin the reputation of the 12 year old by exposing the photographs and video of her. It says that he also threatened to kill PR's family if she did not, to sh did not show him the requested uh, future porno. Uh, you yourself? pornography or future activity office? regarding the Please pornography if she didn't fulfill his demands so he's gonna kill her family go ahead your honor i obviously have a concern for all minors not not just in the community but anywhere because this involved a minor on the other side of the country uh, Your Honor, he was found in possession of child pornography, and what makes that even more concerning is now there's allegations that while in possession of child pornography, he is preying on a minor, targeting a minor for uh, sexual activity, Your Honor, that he's willing to threaten a 12-year-old. Uh, for to uh, get what he wants uh, based on the text or the uh, messages found telling her not for fun but for vengeance your honor I'm concerned that Mr. Jocks is a predator and I think a significant bond is not just warranted but necessary in this case with a GPS monitor. Um, the court today based on Response, the Judge. Go ahead, sir. Judge, there's no allegation that I could see that any of this took place outside of cyberspace. Um, there is no danger to the community at large. Um, I think a, an appropriate bond, or, uh, in this case, with uh, the appropriate restrictions, no internet access, etc would be uh, sufficient to protect the community. I don't know that there's a need for a GPS in this case. There's no allegation that he's ever missed a court date or that he is a flight risk in any way. But I'd ask the court to, uh, uh, pre-trial will probably be necessary, but I think we can dispense with the GPS. Yes, sir. Uh, the court will set your bond, sir, based on several factors. Number one, you allegedly made threats to kill. The court uh, notes that you allegedly admitted to what you've done based on anger. Uh, the court notes that the police allegedly found uh, these porno images on your computer. They found the log where you said you were 17 and you knew she was 12. The court notes that you allegedly tried to extort this young girl. The court notes you represent a danger to her and her family and that you threatened to kill her family and that you've had ongoing uh, extortion um, 
um, threats made to her. The court also notes this court knows you represent a danger to all fe young females and that you've been willing to engage in this activity. The police have indicated this is not an isolated incident. It's ongoing criminal activity, and the court believes that you possibly or probably do fall into the category of being a sexual predator. The court also notes the strength of the case, your admissions, and the videos found. Therefore, the court will set your bond on count one, two, three, and four for $250,000 per count. Your total bond will be $1 million. You'll have pretrial release with the GPS monitor. You are absolutely not allowed to have any contact with BR, that is Bravo Romeo, or anyone in her family directly or indirectly. You will stay 500 feet from them at all times. The court will order a level one lockdown. You are not allowed to use a computer. You're not allowed to use any device which has the potential of being connected to the internet. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, and I've just asked for just an overall uh, order of uh, no contact with minors. No contact with any female under the age of 16. Okay, uh, Nancy Daniela Santana, Jaime Ramos, Gerlene, Alexis, and Elena Ivanova. Judge, with regards to Ms. Santana, I would make a probable cause, uh, probable cause uh, argument. The, st the seems that the uh, probable cause affidavit is conclusory. It's, she spontaneously utters that she thought her apartment was on fire. That's why she pulled the alarm. I would argue no PC and ask for an ROR. Ma'am, I'm going to find no probable cause to pulling a false fire alarm. There are definitely some facts missing here. You'll be released on your own recognizance. Well, Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay, may I see Jamie Ramos? North Broward. North Broward. Um, license suspended, ma'am. Count one, attaching a plate not assigned. Traffic violation. Count four is a misdemeanor. That's $4,000 on a warrant for license suspended. Ma'am, I'm going to set your bond on count one at 100. Count four is 4000 Thank you. How about Gurleen Alexis? Bonded, Judge. Got it. I, uh, How about Elena Ivanova? Uh, judge, he's President of Maine. Yeah, Ms. Ivanova, you've been charged with petty theft. Telling me she doesn't want a Russian interpreter. Ma'am, do you speak English? I, I can't tell speak English. I can't tell speak English. You've been charged with theft. Do you understand that? I am. I, I understand. I speak English. Um, I I can't understand, and I can't tell. Do you want me to get the Russian interpreter here this afternoon to help interpret for us? Uh, I can't tell about what's happening. No, I'm gonna. I'm not. I don't feel comfortable. All right, I need to wait here. We're going to reset We're gonna do it in Russian. Ivanova. I need Russian to reset. One moment. One, one moment, Judge, please. One moment. Oh, Okay, Judge, we are ordering a Russian interpreter. You wanted to reset this for this afternoon? Yes, sir. Someone has replacement for her. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. We're just going to take about a 30 second break.
Let me make this official. We are ordering a Russian interpreter for 1.30 today, right? Thank you, Judge. Thank you. You're having a cross uh, communication. Here you go. Ikea Sewell, Deanne Sazuta Best, Colette Credle, and and Quet Michelle. This <laughs> uh, Ikea Sewell, ma'am. I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna reset your case for 1:30 today. All right, ma'am. See you at 1:30. Okay. Thank you. How about uh, yeah, Diane Suzuta Best? North Broward. Medical reset. Reset yeah, it for uh, what's tomorrow, Thursday? Thursday p.m. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Colette Credo. Medical Broward. reset. Medical reset. I'm going to pass this right through. 1,000 on one, 500 on three, no bond on four. Yeah. How about Ann Cornett, Michelle? Is that you? Right here. Chief President of Maine. Ma'am, you've been charged with theft, resisting arrest, and uh, committing uh, uh, resi resisting recovery of property by a merchant. Court finds probable cause. State, do you have any, uh, One moment, Judge. Well, <laughs> Okay, uh, she looks like she's in pretrial diversion right now out of Aventura from an arrest February this year for two counts of retail theft. Resisting by violence 2011 out of Dade and uh, end of record. Judge, we have an argument. Uh, count two, resisting without, I'm sorry, resisting with should be resisting without. Um, apparently the, uh, the act of violence was swinging her arms around. Uh, there's no allegation that this, uh, the action was directed towards the police intending to uh, to cause violence to the police officer. Therefore, the court would have to go outside the probable cause affidavit to find PC for with violence, but I would ask the court to find probable cause for without. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do it without. And then, um, ma'am, are you currently employed? Yes, sir. What type of work is that, ma'am? I sell here. I work at a beauty store. How long have you lived down here in South Florida? All my life. Do you have any money in the bank? No, I have money at home. Ma'am, allegedly you uh, stole some clothing from the store and then uh, total $200 and then uh, you uh, didn't get arrested when the police tried to take you into custody and said you were uh, becoming violent. I'm going to say you bond on uh, count one. Ma'am, you also have two thefts open out of Dade County for shoplifting down there. So now uh, Broward. So I'm going to say you bond on count one at $1,500. Count two ROR. And count three, two hundred and fifty dollars. You can bond out of jail, ma'am. Thank you. Seventeen fifty. One thousand seventeen seven fifty. There you go. Good luck. Hundred. Um, How about uh, Carolyn Ivy, Trina Griffin, Juanita Hicks, Alicia Wells? Please line up. Attorney. Griffin, come on up. Ivy, Your Honor. Excuse me. Okay, uh, Ms. Ivey, you've been charged with possession with intent to sell and deliver cannabis. Court finds probable cause. Ma'am, how long have you lived down here in South Florida? 49 years. Almost 34 years. years. No, I'm talking to Carolyn Ivey. How long, ma'am? Almost 34 years. Got it, ma'am. Are you working at this time? No, my late husband passed away and required me to stay home, but I'm, I'm currently very feverishly looking for a job. Do you have, do you have any money in the bank, ma'am? Barely. I only got $90 left. Got it. Okay. Steve, do you have any... Um... She's had a possession of marijuana drug paraphernalia from the mid-90s. This is a uh, defendant advice. She smokes weed and sells what she can to make a little extra money. Mm -hmm. Allegedly... Uh, 
found a bag of marijuana, 29 grams worth in her safe, located on the dresser inside her bedroom. All right. Pre-trial release, ROR. I mean, All right. she only has a marijuana in the mid-90s. Yeah, okay, ma'am, you still live on 30th place in Sunrise? Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to release you on your own recognizance, ma'am. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you very much, Your Honor. All right, yes, ma'am. Trina Griffin. This is Trina Griffin, Judge. It's a bit over. All right, Trina Griffin, possession of cocaine, ma'am. Court finds probable cause. Do you have any priors on this Trina Griffin? She's been known also as Trennial Griggins and uh, Trennial Griffin. State, do you have any priors? Yes, Judge. Her Go priors ahead. include. Theft, resisting without violence, unlawful use of false name ID, 2010, theft, 2010, uttering a forged instrument, possession of cocaine, 07, 30 month state prison, violation of domestic violence injunction, 04, battery, 02, aggravated battery, great bodily harm, 95, 33 months as a habitual offender, prison, 96, Berg dwelling, grand theft, same sentence, 92, Two counts of bat Leo, one count of resisting with violence with a VOP, same sentence. Eighty. Ma'am, are you currently employed? Okay. Is, she, is she currently employed? Ma'am, do you have money in the bank? She is not employed. She's been living in South Florida for 49 years, in the same address for 37 years. She has no money in the bank for real estate. She does have Got plenty it. of family down here. She's hoping her friends will help wander out. I was hoping the court would consider five years of good behavior and uh, consider free trial. Ma'am, I'm going to leave bought out for a thousand based on your criminal record. Thank you. Juanita Hicks. Juanita Hicks. Judge, I want to make a probable cause argument with Ms. Hicks. They killed and locate a, uh, a victim. Um, how can how can they prove their case without a victim? I, I don't I don't even think they it even rises to the level of uh, probable cause. They they couldn't find who, who she has a check. We don't know who the victim is. The business has been closed since 2007. There's nobody to verify that if they gave her a check. So I, I I don't think it rises to that level. There's you might not have it. There's an this is a filed case. There's an additional PC affidavit. I, I, I'm just going by no, what no, I, I saw. Know, so I'm, I'm just saying through. what you have there. That's just the uh, officer arresting on the capius. But uh, you know, if you want it, I, I, do you have a copy of the PC affidavit there? Okay, uh, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, this allegedly hap happened April 28, 2015. Ma'am, does she have any criminal record, Kifa? I didn't see any, Your Honor. No criminal record, ma'am. Ms. Hicks, do you still live on uh, 47th Terrace? Fort Lauderdale? No, that's my girl. That's my mailing address. I stay at 2911 Northwest 21st Street. But you get mail at that 47th Terrace uh, location? Yes, sir. Okay. How long have you lived out here in South Florida, ma'am? My life. My whole life. She does have priors. What is it? Sorry. Uh, she had a grand theft 2011. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to lay a bond out today. Your bond's 1,100 based on your criminal record. The facts of the case. Thank you. Kenesha Wells. North Broward. North Broward, Judge. Judge, we have an argument. Go ahead, sir. Judge, the, um, this is a filed case. State filed an information charging um, with a first degree felony of uh, grand theft. Over a thousand dollars, over a hundred thousand dollars, according to the probable cause affidavit in this case, the alleged value of the television that was alleged to have been uh, not returned um, was seventeen hundred dollars. I would argue that's third degree grand theft. I would ask the court to reduce the charge and set the bond accordingly. I think we all agree that was probably a mistake that the bond is ten thousand. Go ahead, State. Does she have any priors? Maybe you've been charged with theft because you uh, allegedly got a TV uh, through some kind of, I don't know, leasing company or whatever, and you didn't you didn't pay for the TV and you didn't give it back. So, um, go ahead, State. Ma'am, do you still live on 130th Avenue in Sunrise? Yes. How long have you lived there? 
What letter is that? December. Okay. Uh, do you have family here in South Florida? Mm -hmm. No. How long have you lived in South Florida? Are you currently employed? Matter of fact, come up here to the second row right there. No. Come up to the second row right there. Uh, when was the last time you were employed, ma'am? Okay. Summertime of last year. How do you support yourself? How do you buy your food? Things like that. My this chi my child's father. He he was supporting me up until yesterday. He got arrested. He was taking care of all the bills. That's how this even came up. He he was taking care. For what, ma'am? Who's taking care of your child right now? She's with her grandmother. Got it. How much was the TV? Ma'am, I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, reduce your bond today to $1,000. You can bond out, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Merci, yeah, Melissa we'll Gracia, Joanna Gonzalez, Lena Aristizabal. Oh, really? Gracia is Paul Ryan. Why? Ma'am, you're charged with grand theft. The court finds probable cause. From J.C. Penny, uh, in, uh, 49 pieces of merchandise, right. total of $1,147 worth. State, do we have any prayers on this? Gracia. One moment. Ma'am, are you currently employed? Okay, I just want to... Not anymore, sir. Do you have any money in the bank? No, sir. Not in the bank. No? How long have you lived in South Florida, ma'am? Right. 21 years. And do you still live on 75th I mean, just, Avenue? I guess let the yes, sir. Is there an apartment or unit number there? All right, thanks. Okay. No, it's a house. Okay, okay. sorry, Judge. Uh, Your Honor, she was arrested June 10th. Was it? One moment, Judge. Well, I'm, that's what I'm checking. No, it didn't happen at the same time. She was arrested June 10th for grand theft at Macy's, stealing um, allegedly a total of 41 various cosmetic items, a total value of $838. Case open? Yeah, she's out in a $1,000 bond. Case number? 15 7 5 3 8 CF 10 a ma'am today I'm gonna set your bond at $2,500 and the court will revoke your bond on 15 7 5 3 8 CF 10 you're gonna be held without bond thank you ma'am how about Joanna Gonzalez North Broward this is Joanna Gonzalez grand theft ma'am the court finds probable cause I see you're from Cluiston am I correct Yes, sir. How long have you been in Broward County now? Two days. Okay, and when do you plan to go back to Cluiston? Soon. Okay, uh, allegedly you stole from Coles to the tune of over um, $2,700. So, along with yeah. another female, allegedly she ran away. Go ahead, State. No problem. No problem, sir. Ma'am? Sorry. Are you currently working in Cluiston? Yes, sir. What type of work do you do? I work as a secretary at a lawyer's office. Do you have any money in the bank? Yes, sir. You do? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I'm going to raise your bond. Lack of ties to the community. The amount you allegedly stole to $2,500. You can bond out of jail, ma'am. Do not return to um, Coles. Thank you, ma'am. How about Lena Aris Disabal? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, you got her. She bonded? Got she it. bonded. Missy we'll Solomon Shiver, Antoine Mack, Damian Baker, and Dexter Denutro. Mm -hmm. Driver's oh, yeah. main jail, Judge. Main, right Shiver, count Boy, seven is a know. theft charge. That's petty right. theft. That bond's 100, sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, look good luck. Antoine Mac, Judge. Any theft, sir? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
from Davenport, Florida. You know what Champions Gate is, sir? Yeah. yeah. I was just there. All right. Um, I did that. I did that. I did that. There you go. Antoine Mack, petty theft, sir. Allegedly went to Walmart, stole $18 worth of items. And, uh, sir, how long have you been down from Davenport? Um, ever since December. Where are you living now? Right now, I'm in between homes. I'm kind of homeless. All right. Um, sir, do you, if you want to work this out, you want to plead no contest to draft to keep you out of jail today? Yes, sir. Sir, do you understand we're not going to have a trial? We're not going to appoint an attorney. It's over with right now. Yeah. Yes, how you, sir. How do you plead, sir? No contest. I'll withhold adjudication. Thank you. How about Damien Baker? Down the middle. Out the door, sir. Down the middle. Damien Baker this trespassing, Mr. Baker. sir. Court finds probable cause. Allegedly trespassing at uh, the Hampton Inn. Multiple times. Sleeping on a lounge chair inside the fence pool. Let me see if you hit the uh, you hit the buffet in the morning. I, I, Last time you were in, you hit the buffet, and then went out to the pool. All right. Go ahead. The state of their priors on this. Well, I mean, I know their priors. Well, I remember was, the last time he got arrested. Well, he was, it, they say he keeps going to the free buffet at Hampton in the morning, that breakfast they lay out with the waffles. He eats free, and then goes out and falls asleep by the pool. I know. I know. So this has happened multiple times. When's the last time it happened? So are you currently employed, Mr. Baker? That annoys me. Sir, no, sir. Looking, sir. Do you have any money in the bank? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Say it. What was the last time? May 28th. For what? Tell me Hampton in again? Yeah. Right. He, um... <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, I understand. Sir, this is an ongoing issue with that Hampton Inn. I mean, it's not the crime of the century, but we have a right not to have people uh, you know, come in there and do it. So I'm going to say you bought it $250 in order you not to return to the Hampton Inn. Thank you. How about uh, Dexter Dutra? <laughs> yes, sir. Good morning. President of the main judge. All right, Dexter Denutro. Battery. Yes, sir. Court finds probable cause, Mr. Denutro. Uh, courtyard Cafe, Wilt Manners allegedly walked into the kitchen and punched out one of the uh, people in the kitchen, had a hematoma in the back of his head. He had to be taken to the hospital. Allegedly, this defendant said when he gets out of jail, he's going to go back and do it again. Go ahead, state the No, sir. Your no, sir. I didn't say that, Your Honor. No, sir, Your Honor. I did not say that, Mr. Hurley. Go ahead. Going to be seeking a bond increase. 2008 battery, 2009 aggravated stalking, two counts, a little over 64 and a half months state prison. 09, aggravated assault and aggravated stalking, same sentence. 08, trespass. 06, possession of marijuana. 04, trespass. 02, loitering and prowling. 99, burglary of a structure and grand theft with the violation of probation. And that was uh, 99? Yes. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Miller, anything you'd like to say? Judge, um, there's nothing I can say. I'll ask the court to uh, inquire as to his time. Sir, do you have any money in the bank? Y yes, Your Honor, I got a couple hundred dollars in the bank. How I've long, been working. How long have you lived down here in South Florida, sir? About 36 years. All right, and who's gonna bond you out today? I was, I was, I'm, I'm hoping my auntie will come bond me out, but I haven't been able to make a phone call down here at this main jail. Sir, based on the fact you've gone to prison for aggravated stalking, aggravated assault, you have a prior battery, prior burglary, and the alleged uh, damage or level of violence, and uh, the court's, uh, uh, it says here, hit him multiple times with, a fit, with your fist, temporary loss consciousness. 
and the fact that you allegedly said you're going to come back and get him. I'm going to set your bond at $7,500 today based on this court's concern for his safety, the level of violence order, pretrial release with a GPS monitor, waive the cost of the monitor in order that you have no direct or indirect contact with Barry Fiorenza. Stay 500 feet from him at all times, 500 feet from the Sean and Nick Courtyard Cafe in Wilton Manors. Thank you. How about Nicholas Dawson, Sean Young, Seth Judge, Potter? I was working Before we and turn the page on Mr. DiNutro, so uh, I asked Mr. For DiNutro money. is a former employee of that location. We have asked the court to allow him to return with the police in order to pick up his final paycheck. Yeah. Nah, he can call there and let him mail it to him. Thank you. How about Nicholas okay, Dawson, so he, he Sean can't Young, have contact with Seth him? Potter? What? Excuse me? He can't have contact with contact them? Contact just to tell him where to send the paycheck, all right? Thank you. Okay. So Thank you can you, call. Sir. You can move, move on. We're going to move to the next case. Thank you. Nicholas Dawson, we'll see you. Uh, you're charged with uh, soliciting panhandling. We'll see you at 1 30 today. Thank you. 1 30. Bring him back. And uh, Sean Young, same thing. Oh, trespassing, Sean. We'll see at 1.30 today. And then Seth Potter. Good to see you again, Seth. How you been? Turn on the mic. Turn on the mic. How you been, Seth? Not good, as you can see. Oh, what happened? Uh, six foot seven, 350 pound dude. Really? Oh, yeah. Boy. All right. I know. Well, uh, sir, I'm going to see you at 1 30 today, all right, Mr. Potter? Yes, sir. See you. All right. Take care. I haven't seen Seth Potter in a while. Uh, Sean Johnson? Okay, you're going to see the judge on Wednesday. Sean Johnson, trespassing on 125, count two, violating probation. That's uh, 2000. Thank you. Marquise McBurse, Demetrius Foss, Brian Hampton. And Julio you name, right? Ramos. Hey, I sent to Oscar an email. Your, your date is the 8th. Why so late? Can he get it moved no. forward? All right, Marquise McBurst. You have uh, three okay. misdemeanors. Okay. Uh, would you like to resolve them today? Yes, sir. If you plead no contest, they're all, they're all completed today and they're over with. That's the end yes, of the sir. you want to do. Yes, sir. Are you on probation or parole right now? No, sir. All right, how do you plead to these three charges, sir? No contest. Okay, I'll accept that with withhold adjudication. Thank you. All right, good luck. How about Demetrius Cross? You're done. You go home. Bonded. Cross bonded. How about Brian Hampton? Yeah, President Hampton, you're charged with death, sir. Court finds probable cause. It says here, three bottles of cologne from the men's section. It's Sears. $172 worth. State, do we have any priors on this challenge? Uh, out of Michigan, 2013 retail fraud. Another retail fraud in 2012. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I can't wait to go pee for you. He tells black. Uh, and he told you white. Uh, just, uh, right. just a lot of stuff I'm going through here. So, uh, uh, domestic violence, 2001. How long have you been down here in South Florida? Six, seven weeks. Seven weeks. And where'd you come from? Michigan. And what, what's the purpose of coming down here to Broward? Coming down and brow look for work. I've been putting in about 30, 30 to 35 contacts for, for work. What type of work do you do? Construction, painting, restaurant, cooking. Okay, do you have money Pretty in the bank? Pretty much everything. I've, I have um, tried a couple construction sites also. Do you have any money in the bank? No, but I have a friend. Okay, I'm going to say- No money. I'm going to set your bond at $100 so you can bond out. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. How about Julio Ramos? North Broward. North Broward, Mr. Ramos, you're charged with license suspended, sir. Give me a moment here. 
Sir, you have no driver's license. I'm looking at your driving record right here. You have an ID card. Now, I'm looking here. Your ID card is currently suspended for driving on an ID card. Um, I see Broward County, um, Palm Beach County, failure to pay traffic tickets you've gotten for driving on a ID card. You've also been convicted of speeding on the ID card, driving on a license suspended, an ID card suspended, and you've been caught driving without an ID card and charged with that. Do you, are you currently employed, sir? Uh, yes. What type of work do you do? Roofing. Do you have any money in the bank? No. Okay, sir, I'm going to set your bond today at $500. Uh, it appears that you continue to drive with an ID card. I'm going to ask you, sir, please stop driving without a, you have no driver's license. All right, thank you. Thank you. How about uh, Omishwar, Lal, Darren Johnson, Jose Renderos, Hayward Smith. Lal, Lal is at North Broward. Lal is at North Lal. Broward. Okay, sir, count four battery on a person detained in the jail. That bond's 1,000, thank you. How about Darren Johnson? President Domain, we have an argument. Sir, count one's burglary with a battery. Count two's a parole violation. Your Honor, I provided a supplemental report <laughs> by uh, Officer <laughs> Deputy Barry that fills in some of the holes, I believe. Well, I'm going to have to take some, I'm going to reset this for one well, your, your Honor, it, it looks like a lot. I can tell you right now, it's just, um, if you go to the fourth page, it's just one, it's just one page. Well, you know, has the defense seen this? I've, I've, yes. Okay, well, I'm looking here at home. Give me a moment. Back on the court's right, the supplemental report. Go ahead. Your Honor. Charge with burglary with a battery on one parole violation on two. Go ahead. Your Honor, I would be seeking a foreclosed bond. I believe that there is proof evident or presumption great. Uh, Your Honor, the allegations. First off, Mr. Johnson is known to uh, Ms. An uh, Ms. Andrew as stated she is the uh, victim of the case that he is currently on parole for. Uh, your Honor states specifically that uh, she ran into him, uh, she went home, she opened the door to her home and saw him, specifically telling him at that point, you better get, as she went back into her residence, thereby establishing he was not welcome in her home. She uh, still saw him there, so she went outside to tell him again to leave. It's alleged at this point that he forced his way into the home. 
They push each other. She couldn't get him out. Continued yelling her. Struck her and struck her in the mouth with a closed fist. Uh, the uh, officer notes, while he doesn't note any swelling, he did note that there was a small cut on her inner lip. Your Honor, I believe based on, I mean, the facts are straightforward and simple, but I believe there is proof evident at this time. Okay. Just briefly respond. Uh, there's no other independent. Uh, I'm just relying on the four corners of the document. When it comes to the issue of the credibility of a witness, and it seems uh, that the cops, uh, it doesn't seem, per the probable cause affidavit, that there, they note that there was a small laceration in the lip, but nothing, nothing as to that will indicate other than her word that he was inside the house. I, when it comes to an issue of credibility, there is probable cause, but I don't think it rises to the level that, of a standard that's higher than beyond a reasonable doubt uh, to hold this uh, gentleman no bond on, uh, on a burglary battery. I the court will find proof evident presumption great based on this affidavit and based on the, uh, based on the not only the initial affidavit, but the supplemental. Uh, the court uh, notes this defendant just got out of prison for allegedly abusing the same woman. She's very well aware of him, and it's to be understood that she would want to have no contact uh, with him. The court also notes that it appeared that he was concealing his bicycle when they uh, tried to find him. Um, sir, the court will already be held without bond on one, no bond on two. The court will order no contact with Verna. Burnett Andrew, directly and indirectly. Thank you. Hey, you go. Good Jose Ren Renderos and Hayward Smith. Sorry, I speak English. I don't know. Renderos. No English. You're going to call us. Judge, we need a Spanish interpreter for Mr. Renderos. Thank you. Let's see Hayward Smith. Mr. Smith, grand theft, grand theft, uh, count two. Court finds probable cause. Is an employee of 7 Eleven in uh, Coconut Creek. He allegedly stole uh, $2,000 from the register and uh, four money orders in the amount of $500 each. Okay, state or their. Uh, Just the uh, possession of marijuana from last year. All right. Team. Sir, are you currently, uh, do you have money in the bank? No, sir. How long have you lived down here in South Florida? My whole life, Judge. Sir, based on how the amount you allegedly took and uh, based on your criminal record, your bond's going to be 1000 on one, 1000 on two. Thank you. How about Anthony Teachman, Jonathan Wiggins, Frank Mathis, and Kevin Eford? Judge, um, Mr. Smith is, um, has declined the PD. However, he wants to know if the court would consider putting him on pretrial based on his lack of uh, priors. No, sir. No. Thank you. How about Anthony Teachman? Good luck. Come on up to the podium, sir. Possession, uh, teachman, possession of PVP and paraphernalia. That's uh, flack uh, count one. State, do you have any priors on this ge gentleman? Yes, Your Honor. He was convicted of, looks like, one, two, three. Sir, you're from Crystal River, Florida, correct? <laughs> sir, are you, do you live in Crystal River, Florida? No, sir. I've been living here for the last about seven months, sir. Okay, and where'd you come from? I come from Alabama. Okay, and what, you came, what was the reason you came to Broward County? I was staying with some family members. Here in town? And uh, they kicked me out. Right. And, Your Honor, I was sitting, I was sitting in wait, an wait, alleyway. Let me just ask you this. Why did you come to Broward County? To stay with some family members. You have family here in town? Yes, sir, I do. Can you stay with them when you're out of jail? No, sir, I can't. Okay. We had an argument. Go ahead. From what I can tell, out of Marion County in 07, just in the year of 2007, uh, he's convicted of seven separate cases of felony theft, sentenced to a year and a day concurrently on all. 2005, out of Citrus County, possession of cocaine, four years. He's got a warrant right now out of Marion, uh, Sorry, Citrus County for failing to appear on a traffic case showing out of Alabama an arrest for drug paraphernalia in 2014. I have no disposition 
and an arrest in Tennessee in July of last year for aggravated domestic assault with no disposition. He's got a total of 20 prior felony convictions, 21 prior misdemeanor convictions. Most recent was uttering a forged instrument in grand theft out of Orange County from 2013. Got it. So I'm going to let you bond out of jail today. Count one to 1,000. Thank you. Good luck. Good afternoon. Go outside and speak, sir. There you go. What about uh, Jonathan Wiggins? President Domain. Sir, uh, trespassing count one. And uh, count two is a felony petty theft. That's a no bond hold on two. Count one's 25. Thank you. How about Frank Mathis? Good luck, yeah. Right here, sir. Sir, grand theft, court funds, problem cause. Allegedly, uh, Allegedly, you were an employee of a place called Off the Wall Trampoline Fund Center and allegedly stole three cell phones for $697 worth. Steve, do you have any priors on this gentleman? 1998, strong arm robbery, 15 years state prison as a habitual offender and PRR offender. Okay, wait, let me write. Um, how, many, how long in prison? 15 years. Bless you. Judge, it doesn't say here how the um, how they connected Mr. Mathis with this alleged crime. Okay. It says there was stuff stolen, but they don't say how they found how they determined he was the one who did it. That's fine, Judge. We can come back. That's fine. We'll do that. Uh, Twenty-four hours. All right, sir. Okay. We'll, uh, Not today. We'll bring you back tomorrow. tomorrow p.m. Thank you. How about Kevin Eve? For okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Grand theft and fraud. Court funds probable cause allegedly from Wells Fargo Bank. They said you were trying to cash a stolen check. Go ahead, Steve. Are there any priors on this gentleman? One moment, Judge. Sir, you currently employed? Um, I was at Outback. What did you do there? A line cook. Do you have any money in the bank now? No. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, he had a 2007 delivery of cocaine resisting without violence. Hello? Set? Yeah, sure. Hello. No, not okay. for the prior. Well, wait, wait, can can you just can? How long did you work it out? Can you just text it to me? Um, almost a year. No, when did? When was the last time you worked there? Um, last week. And you don't work there anymore? No, not ever since this incident. I was supposed to go to work yesterday. Okay. All right. Um. Do you still live on um, 10th Avenue in Pompano? Yes, sir. Where'd you go to high school? Here for high school. Okay. Uh, I'm going to um, release you on your own recognizance on both these, all right? Yes, sir. Hey, let me ask you something. Do you make the Bloomin' Onion, too? Yeah, I make those. You do? Now, yes, do they, sir. Do they really come from Australia or are they American onions? Mm, nah, they're American onions. Okay, just check it. All right, <laughs> thanks. All right. All right. He's the, Good one, luck. He's the one who throws the shrimps on the Barbie, you know? <laughs> Jonathan Frederick. Just, Jonathan Frederick. Yeah, I figured a little judicial humor to lighten things up here. All right. We we all laughed over here. Everybody's cracking up. I know. I know. Sue's probably rolling on the floor over there. All right. Jonathan Frederick. Jonathan on, man. Frederick, Alberto Gomez, Nicholas Stevens, and Arthur Hawkins. Oh. Jonathan Frederick. Mr. Frederick, you've been charged with burglary of a dwelling and grand theft. Court finds probable cause, Mr. Frederick. 
Entered a fence in backyard of a home, stole tools from the covered patio, caught on video, I believe, yeah, caught on video, about $300 worth. Okay, go ahead, state any priors? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh... Sir, how long have you lived in Broward County? Uh, about a month. And you came from South Carolina, am I correct? Other stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, what did you come to set? What did you come to Broward no, County? No, I'm coming for? out of here. Because you repeat that. Why did you come down here from South Carolina? I had come to um to get a job, do something different. What type did? How'd you get down here? Train. Did somebody pay your ticket for you? Yes. Who paid your ticket? My father. Okay. Do you have any family here? My biological family. He's here? They're here in town? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Your Honor, he was just arrested June 12th and pled out of magistrates for resisting without violence and loitering and prowling. In that case, um, I don't know if you were here or someone else, but he was seen at approximately 4 in the morning first, uh, Walking down the sidewalk, pulling a black and red lawnmower. That was that was me. Uh, okay, uh, they got advice from an anonymous tipster that he was seen hiding, you know, by a uh, church. Right. Now he's breaking into a home. I mean, there's he hasn't been here very long. And you know what? If you look at the charges, he has burglary in South Carolina. Excuse me, sir. Uh, he had a burglary in 2010. It's violent. Were those both out of Cal, uh, Carol? Yes, they were. Another brother in 2008, that's a second degree. There was a 2009 first degree murder. This is Carl. I'm with Carl. 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 Like, give me a second. I'll show but I think somebody coming in the door for you. Okay, but I'll talk to them when they get Your Honor, and it's, I think it's fair to say there's no reason to believe that this is going to stop. Okay, sir, do you have any money in the bank? No, sir. So I'm going to set your bond on count one at uh, $10,000, count two at 1000 I count one, two, three burglars out of South Carolina, your lack of ties to community, recently arrested for loitering and prowling here in Broward. Thank you. How about Alberto Gomez? Good, Good luck. Mr. Gomez, what? petty theft. Uh, petty theft, count one. Down. Third or subsequent offense, count two. You have a misdemeanor. Uh, municipal ordinance violation for trespassing, and uh, I'm going to uh, release your ROR on two. Now let me ask uh, State, do we have any prices on him? On Gomez. And Gomez, Alberto. Yeah. $345 worth from Walmart. Does he have priors? One moment, Judge. Gomez, are you currently employed? No. Do you have money in the bank, sir? No. Go ahead. Is it fine? Your Honor, I'm showing that he is. Yeah. He's got other priors, but right now he's also out on a. Possession of heroin. Okay, 149476 CF10A. Got it. Sir, today I'm going to set your bond on account one at $750. And uh, on the heroin, I'm going to uh, order your bond be revoked. 149476 CF10. You're going to be held without bond. Thank you. How about Nicholas right, Stevens? Here we go. Good luck. Here, sir. We're not bonding out. No, 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 no. I think she's here in a case we might have called her. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Part one part moment, Joe. She's here in a case that we might have called earlier in the docket. Okay, we just take care of Grant Stevens, grand theft, two counts of dealing with stolen property, two counts of false ownership of pawn items. Court finds probable cause. Do we, uh... No prior, Your Honor. No. Allegedly stole from somebody's residence a uh, total of $768 and pawned them. Defendant allegedly admitted to it. All right, Mr. Uh, Nicholas Stevens, sir, how long have you lived out here in South Florida? Twenty years, sir. And what do you do for work right now, sir? No, I'll be on top of you on the way out. Repeat that, sir. What do you do for work? I'm currently unemployed. I'm looking for.
some jobs at the moment, sir, before I was arrested. Do you still live on 8th Court in Pompano? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to release you, uh, well, let me see here. I'm going to release you, uh, do you have any money in the bank, sir? No, I do not, sir. So I'm going to release you on, um, count three and count five ROR. And, uh, what I'm going to do is set your bond on count one, 1,000, two at 3,500, and four at 1,000. I reduced your bond significantly, sir. Thank you. How about Arthur Hawkins? Thank you. Good luck. Hawkins, Grand Theft, count one, 1,000, count two, a warrant on a traffic matter, 500. Thank you. Man, Judge, can we get free trial with Mr. Oh, Hawkins? Man. What is that? It's right up to this point. Can we get free trial for Mr. Hawkins? Um, hold on one moment. I mean, he's part of the reason he's here is he didn't show up in court. He didn't show up in court on count two. Mm -hmm. It's down right there. No, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Thank you. How about, ma'am, which case are you here on? Derek Bailey. Uh, Derek Bailey. Derek Bailey. Derek Bailey. I, I could have sworn it was on earlier on the docket. He's got a marshal's hold, so there's nothing. I, I, Either he was. I could have sworn we had someone with a marshal's hold earlier. But he's, he's got a federal marshal's hold. There's nothing. Yeah, he's got a hold for federal uh, for federal marshal's uh, matter. Um, I'm positive. I... Right. So what is he being but, have? Does he have a court date locally now? We know when he's going to see his uh, state judge, Bailey. We have. I could have sworn he was way to be go to way to the beginning. Like with the out of state stuff. Don't worry about it. So is he gonna be released or is he gonna be held on it? Okay, then there's nothing. We have a court date for him. What he's gonna see is uh there's not there's your honor i can tell you right now there's not because the only thing that would be on the docket is the marshal's hold i don't think there would be any court date listed on the docket okay ma'am i don't know when he's going to see his judge okay um how do you know him uh he's my boyfriend okay does he have a state charge and a federal charge i have no idea i know I do you know okay i thought he might have been but all right he's not on the docket today so, my mistake. Go across the hallway to room 200. Just like, here, go out. He's got, uh, from, I just put his name in. Unless it's spelled differently, he's got no open cases in Broward County. Go right here. Go across the hallway. Talk to my secretary and she'll ask her where he is and she'll tell you, all right? Okay. Paul, Paul Perezon, Braxton Buchanan, Timothy DeBrasse. And Tavares Brewer. Okay, Paul Perezon, Grand Theft. Grand Theft, Grand Theft right. count one, 5,000. Count two, three, and four probation violations. Uh, you'll be held on those. Thank you, sir. How about Braxton Buchanan? Thank you. Buchanan? Buchanan. Stop back down. Count one, you possession can't. of PVP, also known as black, and count two, cannabis. We have problem Do we have any prayers on Mr. Braxton Buchanan? One more That's why. Okay. No judge. No. Mr. Buchanan, how long have you lived down here in South Florida? All my life. And are you currently employed? No. How do you support yourself? Uh, my mother. Okay. Do you have any money that comes in? No, none at all. No? When was the last time no. you worked, sir? Uh, I haven't worked. Never worked? Never. No. When was the last time you were in school? Um, when I was 18. What do you do? What do you, you're 21. What do you do all day? Um, I'm leaving to go to job for in two weeks.
Sir, you can't return to your mother's home on 28th Court. Where else are you going to go? I'm going to job court within two weeks. Okay, I'm going to set your bond at $1,000. Thank you. How about Timothy DeBrasse? Good luck. <laughs> Decline PD, Judge. Sir, possession with intent to sell, manufacture, deliver cannabis. License suspended. Court finds probable cause. Thirty priors on this gentleman. He's out right now in possession of marijuana with intent to sell or deliver. Okay, what's the case number? Fifteen five seven four five CF ten A. CF ten, sir. I'm going to set your bond at a thousand dollars today. Revoke your bond on fifteen. 5745 CF10. That bond is revoked. You're going to be held without bond. Thank you. I'm sorry, Judge. What was that number? 155745 CF10. Thank you. How about Tavares Brewer? I'm without bond. That's correct. Yeah. Move, move to the side, Mr. DeBrasse. Move okay, to the yeah. side. Thank Good you. Luck. Tavares Brewer, you've been charged with possessing cocaine, count one at thousand. Two, you have a warrant on a felony, no bond. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Michael Miller, Alejandro Cuevas, Clinton Carby, Miller Bonded. Yes, Judge. Mr. Miller's Bonded. Yes, Judge. How about Alejandro Cuevas? Yeah. Sir, you've been charged with grand theft. The court finds probable cause. And, uh, Understand, allegedly uh, been paid to go around to multiple AT&T stores to have phone lines added to existing accounts in his name to retrieve the phones. He allegedly stole one Samsung Galaxy phone for eight hundred and forty-five dollars. State, do we have any priors on Mr. Uh, 2010? He was arrested for grand theft. Uh, and he was in the pretrial diversion program. 2013 possession of. Marijuana. Got it. Okay. Sir, you working at this time, Mr. Uh, Cuevas? Yes, sir. What do you do for work? Air conditioning. Do you have any money in the bank? Uh, not right now. So I'm going to set your bond at 1000 today. Based on your criminal record, the facts, the case. Thank you. How about Clinton Thanks. Darby or Carby? President of Maine. So you have uh, count one, suspended license 750. Count two, three, and four are, muni are uh, misdemeanor, no bonds. Thank you. Good luck. Missy Christian no Calderon and Kelvin Melendez. Melendez is at North Broward, Judge. Who is? Melendez is at North Broward. Got this it. is Mr. Calderon. I'm going to take Calderon first. Sir, robbery with the firearm, count one. Count two, you wanted out of county, out of uh, Martin County for driving without a driver's license. Now, state count one is a first degree punishable by a life felony. Are you seeking to foreclose bond and release conditions? Yes, Your Honor. There must be a finding of proof evident, presumption great. Can you please make a showing? Your Honor. Why you believe that? Based on the report provided by Detective Caruso, the information obtained from Ashok Jagwani, uh, he informed uh, the detective that he was while picking up uh, mail for his employer. He was approached by two uh, Hispanic males, uh, gave a description, what they were wearing, uh, their faces were covered. Uh, he um, informed law uh, detective that the uh, uh, male later identified as uh, Melendez was in possession of a firearm, that uh, the male uh, identified as called uh, and that he uh, ordered for uh, the victim to give him his money. Well, Mr. Calderon reached into his back pocket, removing his wallet and moving the money from the wallet uh, and then handing the wallet back to the victim. Also stating that Mr. Calderon removed uh, the victim's class ring and tried to remove his watch but was unable to and at that point uh, abandoned stealing the watch. Uh, they left in a vehicle and it appears that uh, the um, Nate Van license number was obtained. Um, it's listed here as a grade 2014 Chrysler 300, license plate DJRY87, 
registered to Paula Godomsky. Uh, it stated that the victim followed, uh, attempted to follow the defendants, uh, lost sight of them, and license plate recognition in the city recorded uh, the vehicle until they uh, left the uh, city limits. Uh, there was also surveillance cameras that uh, would appear to corroborate the uh, series of events that uh, the victim did allege, although it was not close enough uh, uh, to give specific uh, detail, uh, show that um, the uh, firearm was not visible, Your Honor. And also, going back, noting the victim did describe the uh, revolver as uh, small and bronze colored. Uh, Your Honor, police through use uh, um, a database to yeah, check the, uh, the they got an address for the registered owner of the vehicle. They went to the location, they spoke to a resident, they uh, waited for the owner of the residence, Ms. Gadomsky, to come home. They got permission. Uh, they also stated from uh, Ms. Uh, I believe Gadomsky's daughter that Mr. Calderon and Mr. Melendez, Calderon being her ex and Melendez being her friend, were inside the residence. Uh, they ended up getting permission. They were, uh, one Once they exited, began to walk away. They were detained. Police got uh, permission from the owner of the vehicle to search the vehicle. In the vehicle, they found a gray hoodie sweatshirt. Mr. Melendez was described by the uh, victim as wearing a wider gray hoodie, sweat, uh, hoodie sweatshirt. Also, a red bandana was recovered. He was described as wearing a red bandana. Two pair of blue jeans, blue jean pants were discovered that appeared to match the ones worn by Calderon Melendez in the surveillance video. Uh, none of the stolen property was recovered. Police also took a post Miranda statement from Mr. Melendez. He confessed to both his involvement and Mr. Uh, Calderon's involvement in the crime. Now, granted, Mr. Melendez claims he did not use a weapon. What he claims is that he used a stick and that he got rid of the stick and uh, and the uh, class ring, and the bl uh, wait, I'm sorry, and the blank check. Your Honor, I do believe, based on the evidence presented at this time, that there is proof evident presumption great for a robbery firearm. I understand that Mr. Melendez denies using a firearm, but I believe that is a self-serving statement that doesn't necessarily uh, take away from the evidence of the case. Additionally, it's just not believable that Mr. that the victim would confuse a stick with a bronze and colored small revolver. Uh, I believe, it, based on his admission, the other totality of the evidence, that there is proof evident, presumption grade against both defendants. And that the, uh, I don't know if you mentioned this, but that uh, Melendez allegedly uh, gave it up at the end. He said that, uh, I have a quote here, Melendez waived his rights, subsequently admitted to the crime, stating that he and Calderon were just driving around, and that uh, Melendez did say this did to, to this did take place. He just said he pointed a stick, and then um, that was it. Okay, so Mr. Miller, anything you'd like to say? Judge, Mr. Calderon, um, there is no proof evident presumption great that he was a participant in this cri in this crime. The only evidence you have is an alleged statement by um, someone who was under arrest, probably under duress. Um, they did not recover anything uh, related to the crime. There's no one that places them inside of the vehicle. Uh, there is no one, uh, nothing specific to the crime was recovered. No firearm was recovered. Quite frankly, I've never heard of a bronze firearm. I've never seen one before. Um, so I would argue that uh, the idea that, that this was even a, a robbery with a firearm is, is a bit far-fetched. Um, Mr. Melendez may be differently situated. However, his statements against Calderon do not rise to the level of proof evident presumption great. It is just statements of someone who is in custody. I understand. Mr. Calderon, based on the totality of the circumstances, all the evidence, including the affidavit attached here to the court, will find there is proof evident presumption great that you, in fact, allegedly committed a robbery with a firearm in the City of Lighthouse Point. Court will order no contact with Ashok, Jack Wani directly and directly County. You're going to be held on a $1,000 bond out of Martin County. Messi Kelvin Melendez. All right, good luck.
Melendez. He's in North Broward. So you're charged North with Broward. robbery with a firearm. The court will adopt the argument made previously by the state assistant state attorney. So are you uh, also seeking to hold this defendant without bond? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find proof evident presumption great regarding you, Mr. Melendez, that you were the one allegedly holding the gun. You made the admissions also. And uh, you'll be held without bond until further order of the court. Judge, at this Thank time, you. I'm going to invoke both uh, defendants' rights from this out. Who we have here? Are you here on a case? We we actually need to speak to someone to help us out first. Okay. We have a pretty complicated case. Just give me a moment. I'll be oh, right with you. Thank you. Merci, Jose Moray. Morais? Yes. Main jail. Sir, cannabis, no driver's license, failed to register a vehicle, attaching a plate, not a sign. Count one, your bond. Hold on, he's ordered out of Orange County. That's what we need. Sir, uh, count one will be $100. Count five, out of county hold, no bond. Your Honor, Thank I have you. no objection to going to ROR and get him out of here. Okay, I'll do that. I'll release your ROR on count one. You go into Orange County. Yeah. All right, good luck. They're going to come take you to Orange County and deal with whatever you got there. Meanwhile, the tape is an issue, so you'll be brought back down what here. What we're going to do is we're going to do Jose Renderos after after uh, lunch, all right? That's the Spanish speaker. We have one professional. Yeah, it's the reports on page four. It's pretty straightforward. The issue is uh, identification. Um, Where is Levon Long? Connecting the property. I believe that's him sitting there in Maine. Okay, set for tomorrow. Okay. Hey, this is Mr. Long, Judge. Got it. And Your Honor, I prov I've provided both Your Honor and Defense Counsel with a copy of a supplement report from uh, Deputy Blackman. Okay. Court, uh, I, I've read this. He allegedly made post Miranda admissions. Do you have any issues with this? Okay, so, so I'm going to find probable cause for a burglary of a dwelling and theft. You allegedly went in somebody's yard to take some bicycles. Sir, uh, what do you do for work right now? I'm unemployed at this moment. You're what? Unemployed? I'm unemployed at are this you, moment. Are you in high school right now? Yes, I'm still in high school. Are you going to go into your senior year next year in the fall? Yes. Who do you live with? I live with my dad. Did he have any records? I'm checking that right now. Patrice, unless you had any notes of juvenile, I'd have to check to see if he's juvenile since he's 18. Page 18. You live with your father? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Just ask him who's going to help bond him out. Who's going to help bond you out, sir? My dad. His father. Okay. Um. What does your dad do for work? He's a welder. I don't know if I'm having issues with the system. I'm not showing. Oh, well, okay, Your Honor. Um, no, I don't see anything. Okay. Judge, under the circumstances, can we get pretrial release with a curfew? I'm going to do that. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance to pretrial release today. Uh, you have to be there today by 4 o'clock. It's this right there in the street. Are. I'm going to order that you have no contact. Directly and directly with Irma Gerson. You have to stay out of her yard. You have to stay away from her house. You understand that, sir? Yes, sir. So I'm going to give you a curfew every night of the week at 9 o'clock. You have to be in the house by 9 p.m. every night, all right? All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Judge. You have to report there today, sir. There, there's the map right there. It's right down the street. Thank you. Okay, right. that's Thank a wrap. You, Judge. See you after going lunch. back at 1.30. Thank you.